Electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation happen in mitochondria and are main source of energy in aerobic respiration process. Hello learners, welcome to my educational channel. Stay home, stay safe and keep learning. Today, let's have a dialogue on concepts of electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. But before starting, make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for getting new alert for upcoming educational videos. Keep raising your queries in the comment box and consult the textbook of biochemistry for further detail. The electron transport chain is a series of electron carrier proteins and organic molecules found in the inner membrane of mitochondria. Electrons are passed from one member of the transport chain to another in a series of redox reactions. Energy released in these reactions is captured as proton gradient, which is then used to make ATP in a process called chemiosmosis. The aggregate of these two closely associated processes, that is electron transport chain and chemiosmosis is called oxidative phosphorylation. Before beginning with electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, first of all, let's recap the things. In previous videos, we had a talk at length about glycolysis and citric acid cycle. We saw there in glycolysis that oxidation of one glucose molecule convert into two molecules of pyruvate. In that, we also get reduction of oxidized NAD into NADH, although ATP was also produced there but we are more focused towards electron carrying molecules, reduced NAD and reduced FAD because this is what the electron transport chain is all about. The pyruvate thus produced in cytosol first transported into mitochondria and converted into acetyl coenzyme A by reducing oxidized NAD into NADH. This acetyl coenzyme A enters into citric acid cycle and further oxidized by producing reduced NAD and reduced FAD besides ATP. So you can see in the end we obtained these two electron carrying molecules in reduced state. One is reduced NAD and the other is reduced FAD. These electron carriers are subjected to participate in electron transport chain and get oxidized back to NAD and FADH. These lose their high energy electron the energy of these electrons are released by transpositioning downhill from a chain of electron carriers which is eventually used to pump the protons from matrix to inner membrane periplasmic space. This is how the electron transport chain works in the mitochondria. Now let's see in detail how the electron transport chain drives in inner mitochondrial membrane. First we discuss the working of electron transport chain for NADH. You know this electron transport chain operates in inner mitochondrial membrane which have two faces, one is towards matrix side and the other is towards periplasmic space side as you see here. Four protein complexes are associated with membrane to transport NADH electrons. First is NADH coenzyme Q reductase complex also known as complex 1 molecule. Then coenzyme Q cytochrome C reductase also known as complex 3 and that we have cytochrome C oxidase also called as complex 4. Here the complex 2 is missing as it is exclusively a part of FADH2 oxidation process. Not only these three electron carriers are present here but we have one mobile electron carrier also namely cytochrome C complex which transfer one electron at a time from complex 3 to complex 4. I mean, it take up electrons from complex 3 and deliver it to complex 4. Now, let's see about the work done by electron while moving from high energy to low energy states or downhill. You know, in the matrix, we have high concentration of protons and these protons need to be transported out of the matrix to create an electrochemical proton gradient so that it can produce ATP from proton motive force. The electron transport chain begin by first oxidizing NADH back to NAD and a proton. The two electrons lost here in complex 1 by NADH are taken up by FMN to get reduced which are further transferred to iron sulfur cluster and then ubiquinone to get reduced to ubiquinol. 
In this whole process, four protons are pumped into intermembrane periplasmic space. After that, UV quinol transfers these two electrons to complex 3 by oxidizing into UV quinone accompanied with pumping of two more protons from matrix to periplasm. In complex 3, the electrons are accepted by iron sulfur cluster by pumping again two protons from matrix to periplasm. A total of four protons are now transferred at complex 3. Now, two electrons of iron sulfur cluster are first given to copper A complex, then to other cytochrome and cytochrome A and finally accepted by oxygen and protons which yield us water molecule. In this last phase, another two protons are sent across inner mitochondrial membrane towards periplasm. This completes the journey of NADH electrons. First four protons are pumped at complex 1, then another four at complex 3 and last two protons are pumped at complex 4. Thus we can say from one molecule of NADH, the electron transport chain pumped total 10 protons into the intermembrane periplasmic space. Now for reduced FAD molecules, the complex 1 is skipped while complex 2 which is succinate coenzyme Q reductase in action. The enzyme succinate dehydrogenase that catalyzes conversion of succinate to fume rate is integral component of complex 2. This is the reaction of citric acid cycle that reduces FAD into FADS2 by donating two electrons which loses its electron to iron sulfur cluster of complex 2 and finally the electrons are transferred to coenzyme Q associated to complex 3. Henceforth, all other reactions are same as that of NADH2. Four protons are pumped into the intermembrane space in complex 3 and two in complex 4. Here you see complex 1 is not involved in the process. So total of six protons are pumped in FADH2 oxidation process which are four protons shorter than NADH2 oxidation. Now a proton gradient is established across inner mitochondrial membrane that participate in oxidative phosphorylation process to generate ATP molecules. Another complex is associated is ATP synthase or complex 5 or F0F1 complex. ATP synthase have an ion channel present in F0 subunit through which the protons flow back to matrix and the process is known as chemiosmosis. By definition, chemiosmosis is the movement of ions across the membrane down the electrochemical gradient. Rotation of F1 subunit driven by proton movement through F0 subunit powers ATP synthesis. This is how the oxidative phosphorylation process is coupled with electron transport chain. One ATP molecule is synthesized by inflow of four protons into matrix. So statistically, 2.5 ATP molecules are synthesized by one reduced NAD, whereas 1.5 ATPs are synthesized by one reduced FAD. Ultimately, we can calculate how many ATP molecules are generated by one molecule of glucose. So what we have to do is we have to look back through the three processes. First in glycolysis, we had a net gain of two ATPs and two reduced NAD molecules. Each pyruvate molecule produced as end product of glycolysis give one reduced NAD during linking pathway. Now each acetyl coenzyme A produces one ATP 3 reduced NAD and 1 reduced FAD. So a total of 4 ATP, 8 reduced NAD and 2 reduced FAD are produced by one glucose molecule. By considering electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, total 32 ATPs are produced. But actually the real ATP generation is roughly lies between 30 to 30 per glucose molecule. 32 ATPs from the breakdown of one glucose molecule is a high-end estimate and the real yield may be lower. For instance, some intermediates from cellular aspiration may be siphoned off by the cell and used in other biosynthetic pathways, reducing the number of ATP produced. Cellular aspiration is a nexus for many different metabolic pathways in a cell, forming a network that's larger than the glucose breakdown pathway alone.
the total atp yield in ethanol or lactic acid fermentation is only two molecules coming from glycolysis because pyruvate is not transferred to mitochondria for further oxidation and reduced to ethanol or lactic acid in the cytoplasm in next video we will learn about another important metabolic pathway that is beta oxidation of fats i'll keep nurturing your interest in learning thank you so much for watching